One year from today, voters will go to the polls for the crucial midterm elections. But the two major parties are already in a fight that could tilt the scales before any votes are cast. It's a process called gerrymandering. That's a term that dates back to 1812, when Massachusetts Governor Elbridge Gerry drew this district around Boston. And the local paper said it looked like a salamander, hence gerrymander, the name stuck. Now, despite reforms to end the practice, Ed O'Keefe shows us how both parties are trying to gain an advantage in two very different states. Ed, good morning to you. A gerrymander almost looks quaint compared to what they're drawing these days. It sure does, Tony. Good morning. Happy one year to go until Election Day 2022. Dozens of states are still redrawing their lines. Some fights are so contentious they're likely to end up in court and may not get decided until closer to Election Day next year. We recently visited two states, New York and Ohio, at the center of these kinds of fights. One's controlled completely by Democrats, the other by Republicans. Both solid examples of the kinds of partisan games being played nationwide. This fall in Ohio State's Sea of Red, there's also a red-blue divide that's harder to see. The university, home to more than 60,000 students, is sliced up into three different congressional districts. One so large, it links part of Ohio State's Columbus campus with Ohio University, an hour and a half away in Appalachia. You look at the state map and you want to laugh. It looks like a kindergartner drew it. Heather Pearson lives in this little part of Columbus that sticks out on the congressional map like a sore thumb. Basically, we feel like we're being ignored. It's done so our votes don't count. Right here, this side is one congressional district. Jen Miller, who leads Ohio's nonpartisan League of this Women Voters, came with us choice. to walk the line. Do they look house by house at how people are registered? They do. In fact, there are literally situations in Ohio where one house can be surrounded on three sides by another congressional district. Literally, it is map makers and politicians picking their voters rather than the other way around. Overall, Ohio voters pick Republicans just slightly more than Democrats in recent congressional elections. But look at this map. 12 of the state's 16 House seats are Republican controlled, in part because the GOP controls state government and drew the lines. And they're doing this why? Simply to secure a partisan advantage. Miller's group is suing the Ohio Redistricting Commission, also controlled by Republicans, alleging extreme partisan gerrymandering. We asked to talk to those Republicans, but they all declined an interview. The Columbus powers of be. So we turned to longtime Ohio GOP strategist Terry Casey. To those that say Republicans are drawing these lines the way they want in order to hold on to power, you would say, Welcome to America and politics be in politics. That's just the way the game is played. Until the Supreme Court or somebody else figures out a better way. A better way is also what New Yorkers asked for, backing a bipartisan commission. But in the Empire State, Democrats could use their total control in the state legislature to reject the commission's map and draw their own. One proposal could cost Republicans up to five seats in Congress. It's just not something that captures the public's attention. We joined Democratic State Senator Michael Giannaris, who could get to draw those lines, on a walk through a part of Queens, represented by Congresswoman Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, that could get drawn out of her district. For you guys, you'd have to memorize a whole new map every 10 years, potentially. And we do. I, across the street from my home is somebody else's state Senate district. <laughs> so I have neighbors of mine that, to this day, are confused that they don't get to vote for me. And confused to find his name still on the side of his former office here. His former office because Republicans drew it out of his district a decade ago. It is a form of political punishment. Now, Giannaris says New York needs a better way, even if it costs his party some power. The goal is to set up a commission that's really independent and is not colored by the politics. Who would be qualified to serve on an independent commission? It's difficult, obviously. You call in priests yeah. and surgeons? <laughs> I mean, And then who gets to choose those people? Right. right. Back in Ohio, Jen Miller agrees. It's absolute human instinct, if your party's in power, to use that to rig a political advantage for the next decade. And so I think the only option is to take political parties and candidates out of the process, because they're always going to want to rig them. So, 44 states are redrawing their lines because of population changes. 11 are done, 33 still to go. As we said, some of them may end up in court fights. Notably, last week, New York voters rejected one plan that might have made their independent commission a little more independent. But unless someone else comes up with a better way or the courts force them to do so, Tony, these games are going to continue.
Oh. Wow, Ed, high stakes games, very eye-opening piece. Just because both sides do it doesn't make it right, unfortunately. Thank you.